Britney Spears' lawyer and manager, Cade Hudson, is left in charge of her care. Cade was a horrible person. He had a way of weaseling his way into the lives of troubled female celebrities when they were at their lowest. Cade Hudson made offers to a man named Sean Rose, soliciting him for oral sex. He was hard and began to rub his against me. Did he ever get charged? No. Fans are worried that Britney Spears is unwell, even though her lawyer claims that she's in good hands. But when looking at her management, we find a man who has a slew of allegations against him. So why is Kate Hudson responsible for Britney Spears' life? Let's get into it. <laughs> A lot of people are concerned about Britney Spears' well-being, and a lot of that is dependent on the people that she surrounds herself with. And today, I think it's time we talk about Cade Hudson. He's been in the picture for a very long time, and he may potentially be the problem. Before we jump into Cade, I want to give you guys an update that Sam Iskari is renting from this beautiful apartment in LA, and Britney Spears is paying the bills. We've known this. His rent is $10,000 a month and keep in mind he was married to her for like 14 months so he really doesn't deserve any of that but he's staying in 10,000 tower which is a luxury apartment building between Beverly Hills and Century City a lot of celebrities and important people in entertainment live here including Kate Hudson the f is Kate Hudson part two based off of my personal experience with him. Where we left off, I was telling you guys that Mariah wanted to have her tour wrap party at Dan Tana's, but Cade was insisting that we have it at his apartment building at the 10,000. Again, this is the 10,000 building. A lot of celebrities live there. Everyone from, I know Dixie D'Amelio lived there, Larsa Pippen, and also coincidentally, where Sam just moved into after their breakup. I'll give you guys a better idea on why Sam would end up there because Cade is benefiting from it. But this is one of the most luxurious apartments in Los Angeles. The rent goes from 10K to 65K a month. So I'm assuming we're like, you know, lowballing it when it comes to Sam's rent. It could be much more, but they get a bunch of different things like valet service, a laptop pool, you know. Views of the Pacific Ocean, it's bougie. You can actually even get Botox in your building, so it's one of those. But it seems like Kate Hudson had brought Sam there after the split up because he benefits from this. He also has benefited off of a lot of very vulnerable women who are in entertainment. Mariah Carey's former assistant went on a rant on TikTok, pretty much exposing him and the connections between Kate and the Thousand Building where Sam Asghari lives now. He was quoted saying that Kate Hudson gets his way into the lives of troubled female celebrities when they are at their lowest. He's also claiming that the 10,000 building comps his rent in exchange for him bringing celebrities around. So if he can get Sam Asghari to move in, then he doesn't have to pay rent. If he can get Mariah Carey to come and visit the building, then he doesn't have to pay rent. I was with her manager. We were leaving Sony. We'd been prepping for like an Academy Award slash Golden Globe campaign, which she did get the Golden Globe nomination and she looked so we're leaving the sony lot i'm with mariah's manager and her two pr people to which the manager asked mariah's two pr people are you guys going to be there tonight our main pr girl quickly responded no absolutely not she started to explain to us that Cade was a horrible person that she actually used to be best friends with him until she invited him to i don't remember if it was like a birthday party or her bridal shower or specifically what the event was but she invited him she was in the bathroom in a stall so while she's in the stall Cade comes into the women's bathroom with another one of her guests, starts talking shit about the girl whose party it was and talking about how awful the party was. She elaborated on his character by telling me that he had a way of weaseling his way into the lives of troubled female celebrities when they were at their lowest. To which the other PR person interrupted and said, you do know why you're having the party at the 10,000 building, right? And I was like, no. And he was like, the 10,000 building comps his rent in exchange for him bringing celebrities through the building. I mean, we love a good deal. So the fact that he doesn't have to pay rent for just bringing people around, I mean, that's a, an amazing deal. But nonetheless, it's sneaky. It's giving very much snake. And I wouldn't want any of my celebrity friends or any celebrities I manage to be hanging around someone who is looking for their own benefit. And it seems like he has an even darker past with moments as a CAA agent accused of offering you know what, for access to directors and Hollywood stars. 
stars. Cade was a publicist at Full Picture, a marketing and brand management firm that has clients in fashion, entertainment, and other fields. About a year later, he moved to CAA, which is one of the biggest agencies out here, where he was hired as an agent for commercial endorsements. He has developed a close relationship with numerous celebrities, including Britney Spears, one of the agency's most valued clients. So he's the one that gets these celebrities to these events, which ultimately give the brands exposure. Well, there are some text messages that were released and they don't make Cade look good because this guy named Sean Rose that Cade allegedly met at a tailor claims that Cade was offering up, you know what, for exchange to access to these people. Cade claims, after being my friend on social media for seven years and liking my posts, Sean is now accusing me of soliciting, you know what, from him. My recollection is that he laughed it off and remained my friend on social media. I have the utmost sympathy for victims and harassment and but this is no case. CAA had to put out a statement saying that Cade was not employed at CAA at this time and that this was the first time they're hearing of these accusations and they were going to take them seriously. The problem with Cade is that there are these text messages and you could prove that it came from him. Sean said that he agreed to come forward against Cade as it may help others speak out. He said he is adamant that artists need to be protected and that enough is enough. Sean said the incident occurred in April 2013 when he was invited to Cade's house near West Hollywood past midnight to hang out. The actor said he agreed to meet only because he wanted to build his professional network in hopes of finding more acting work. He said that they had briefly met twice before in public, first when Cade introduced himself as a publicist at a parking lot in LA a few years before, and then they crossed paths at a hotel in Bel Air, where Sean was working. Sean said that Cade kept bringing up his friends in the industry, and then at one point, he actually reaffirmed to Sean that he has the look and should pursue modeling. The actor said that he brought a friend with him to Cade's house that night, and that friend has corroborated that he had accompanied Sean, and Sean told him about the text messages after the meeting was over. I guess during the visit, Sean said that Cade spilled a drink on his pants, and according to Sean, Cade proceeded to wipe Sean's pants and put his hand over his inner thigh. Sean said that he pushed Cade's hand away. Cade said that he has no recollection of spilling a drink on his lap. Quote, if it happened, it was accidental. I would not have touched Sean without his consent. According to Sean, then Cade went into the other room to fetch a pair of sweatpants, and then he started texting Sean, saying, I'll pay you 500 to have your friend leave. The Times verified that the phone number associated with the text messages belonged to the agent. Sean texted back, LOL, I got to go soon. Cade then offered more money, saying, 1,000, stay. I know you're straight, but getting... A blowjob isn't gay, you know that. All you gotta do is sit and sit back and relax. Then his text became more aggressive. If BJ happens tonight, I'll make sure you meet her tomorrow, which he was referring to an actress named Amanda, a friend of the agent. So he's trying to use his celebrity cloud to get this guy to let him suck him off. Oh my God, ew, so desperate. Cade later texted, I'll have you meet with any director this week that I can. Then Sean tried to get out of the awkward situation saying, Dude, friends, he takes it back. I'm not that desperate to make it. The actor and his friend eventually left the house without further incident. A few days later, they exchanged more text messages with Cade asking if Sean would be interested in a three-way. Sean said that he wasn't interested and he only does it with women, according to the text message. CAA, aka Creative Artists Agency. Brittany's agent, Cade Hudson, of the last 13 plus years. He's been employed there for a long time. Just want to show you guys this. this is an article from 2017. Kate Hudson made offers to a man named Sean Rose, soliciting him for oral sex. Rose was afraid to speak out because of the amount of people that Kate knew in the industry. Did he ever get charged? No. But what he has done is be Britney's agent for most of her conservatorship, and he is still currently her agent. Also, a weird thing is that this guy was friends with her ex-fiance, Jason Trawick. I'm going to dig into him a lot more, and I'm going to probably do a few videos on him and just CAA in general, because that entire agency is so corrupt. Despite Cade having this scandalous moment in his career, he's been able to thrive. And that's because he's made great relationships with people like Britney Spears, Zac Efron, Demi Lovato. Actually, at his 30th birthday bash, TMZ wrote an article titled Hollywood's Most Popular Agent. But Sean Rose still felt uncomfortable with what had happened, so he actually confronted Cade before going public. 
Um, Cade said that, you know what, I was like, I was drunk and I'm sober now. Uh, let's go ahead and meet in person at the Polo Lounge. But then Sean suggested a different location and then they agreed. But then Cade ultimately canceled and then had his attorney send a letter to Sean, pretty much threatening him to stay silent. So Sean's story was sad. I mean, he was ultimately threatened to be silenced. And then, I mean, eventually he spoke out and the truth will always prevail. Remember Mariah's former assistant that was talking about him earlier? Well, he also has a story about Cade, something that seems really inappropriate. I mean, he's claiming that Cade had SA'd him, took advantage of him, and he's not holding back. So, I mean, if Cade is like capable of doing all of this, then what is he doing to Britney Spears? And what wasn't he doing in her conservatorship when she was trapped? I first met Cade in 2016 off of a entertainment industry dating app, which I will not name because they're very strict. So we matched. It was a rainy day in LA. He invited me over to hang out. I did make it clear to him that I was not interested in having sex. I know, very naive of me, but he assured me that I was just going to come over. We were going to watch TV and order some takeout. So I arrived at this large home in Beverly Hills, which he had told me was his, and insists that we hang out in the bedroom, which I thought was weird. I still remember Real Housewives of New Jersey was playing. I said, okay, but I again reiterate, I'm not interested in having he says, oh no, I just want to watch TV in here, but let me give you a tour real quick. He shows me around his bedroom. At this point, I take a seat in the bed and I say to him, yes, I took a seat in the bed. And I say to him, what do you want to order for food? I remember I suggested Thai food. He then sits down next to me and then lays down and then says, I'm actually not really hungry. Within seconds, he rolled towards me. He was hard and began to rub his back against me. I said, no, I pushed him off of me. He did it again. I said no and pushed him off of me again. Once it was clear that I was not going to f him, he told me that it was best that I leave and I was happy to. I was very grossed out by the situation, just being like, wow, this guy's friends with these girls and he literally tries to like use their names and photos to try to f people. So this is even more recent than Sean's story. So it doesn't look like he's learned his lesson. And this is leading people to ask, why is Cade Hudson responsible for Britney's care? Because Britney's lawyer, Matthew Rosengart, gave Cade that power to essentially take over her life. Which, I mean, if this guy is using these women and these names and his clout to go and take advantage of people, then what is he doing with Britney Spears' power? Speaking of Cade Hudson, allegedly, TMZ is reporting that Britney Spears' lawyer and manager, Cade Hudson, is left in charge of her care. If she's a free woman, why is somebody left in charge of her care, TMZ? Care to explain that to me? According to TMZ, both Matthew Rosengart and Cade Hudson are sharing responsibility in taking care of Britney. They're saying it's not necessarily a case of Matthew Rosengart and Cade Hudson taking the reins, more like they're the last people standing in Britney Spears' life. Okay, so why didn't you just say that then? Why does your headline say that he's in charge? Anyway, we're told they assist in getting Britney fed to appointments, manage any potential professional opportunities that may come her way. Yeah, sound, sounds like a manager. Allegedly, Matthew Rosengart is not worried about the state of Britney's mental health, and he's saying there's no cause for alarm, there's been no plan to amp up her medical care and therapy. But some people in her life are not agreeing. Who? You just said, you just said that Cade and Rosengart are the only people in her life. So who's not agreeing? Now, I don't want to write off Cade as a terrible person, even though these are very concerning. So if Cade did want to come on and talk about everything and talk about his stories and Britney, then he's more than welcome to come onto this channel or my podcast. But uh, I doubt he will be doing that. Nonetheless, I think it's important to analyze these people in Britney's lives, because if they are bad influences, then maybe that can explain why people are still so concerned. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.